Well, welcome back again to the Do Brand You uh, YouTube channel, and I've got a great guest that I am looking forward to having a conversation with. So, welcome, John. Thank you yeah. very much for having me. I'm delighted well, to be with you. Yeah, thank you. So, John, I've learned that you are a media innovator and pioneer for 40 years, including uh, being a founding director of the Creative Services for the U.S cable TV network, and that you've also led your own video production and creative service companies for over 30 years. Looking forward to diving into finding out more about that. And that currently you are host and producer of Video Mojo, video podcast. And uh, you are also have something that you are really excited and we're going to learn more about today. And that's all about the Video Mojo Creativity Sandbox. So Let's just dive into this conversation, and I would love to hear from your perspective, your, you know, years through video and, you know, kind of working in that because so much has changed. Like, as you're talking pre-YouTube, pre-everything, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we'll we'll come back to the sandbox, but I have this three-pronged, you know, Venn diagram that I do, and one of the components of it is experimentation and curiosity, discovery, being willing to play with new things. And, and that might actually be the superpower, if you will, that you're referring to in terms of me doing what I've been doing for as long as I've been doing. It makes me sound old, all those things you just said. It is U USA Cable Network, by the way. Um, so, yeah, okay. I mean, I've been always fascinated with the creative opportunities that come from, in particular, video, because I've been, you know, originally when I started my own company in 85, it was as a video production company. And you mentioned the background in broadcasting. And I was able to see the way that things are changing uh, and the way video mm. technology was moving quickly, even back then. And the other piece was, the, you know, my first corporate client was Xerox, who was introducing a new form of, uh, when voicemail was new. They were introducing voice messaging. And I did a video for them that was supposed to be a sales video that ended up being user education. And I saw this Grand mm -hmm. Canyon gap between people and technology that in order for people to catch up and, you know, the gap keeps getting wider and wider, particularly now with AI and all the digital video and social media, et cetera, et cetera. So I just think that's fun yeah. uh, to learn and be able to help people take advantage of the power that these new technologies offer kind of fundamentally at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's a democratization of media. So when you think back to yeah. what it was like in the yeah. old days, if you're old enough or historically, there were the all of this media stuff that you and I are now interacting with. You're in New Zealand. I'm in California. And, and you know, it was yeah. impossible. It was only in the hands of big corporations. When I started a radio network yeah. back in the 70s, there was not even targeted broadcasting. It was all big networks that were general audience. And my early days of cable in the yeah. 80s was the first time that cable networks were, okay, there's a channel for women, there's MTV, there's CNN, there's ESPN, all these that, that were yeah. segmented and that didn't even exist. And now we've gone with YouTube down to right. like micro segments. So I just think it's fun to be curious Stop. and engaged and willing to experiment. Yeah, that is that is really cool. So, uh, so you've, what, what, what kind of things are you seeing at the moment with what's happening in video? I mean, from my perspective, when I think of that, I just think of what I do here on, you know, connecting through Riverside FM, you doing a, a YouTube podcast, or I think of recording video to create courses, I, I re or I record video for a YouTube channel. I mean, can you expand a little bit more on what's happening in the video audio space? Sure. I mean, and, and I want to, it's interesting because before we started the interview, you were talking about your core values around community and connection and that what you're doing yeah. and what we're doing here, the fact that the audience on YouTube can see our faces and get a sense of our tone yeah. of voice, that doesn't come through in the same way in written media. And that level yeah. of authenticity and, you know, we could use the term personal branding 
uh, has expanded because of the way that video is expanded. And then there's yeah. TikTok, which I think a lot of people still underestimate, and particularly people in my age group, certainly, that they're like, I, I literally, the other day on the golf course, told the guy that I'd gotten a golf tip off of TikTok, and he went, what are you doing on TikTok? You know, I guess with the presumption yeah. that anybody who's over 60 doesn't, you know, play on TikTok, but it's not true. There's lots of people my age on TikTok. And it, but it does yeah. reinforce this kind of uh, importance of authenticity and the ability to yeah. make real connections and communicate. There's all these micro niches that I was talking about that are on YouTube also exist on TikTok. And their secret sauce is the algorithm that gives that that literally learns through all these multiple touches, which happen very quickly when you're scrolling videos on TikTok to bring you the content that you want. You know, within five minutes, let alone five hours, your TikTok channel is completely different. Your for you feed to be specific about it than mine is. And so it becomes mm. a kind of personalized media enabled by AI in a sense. I mean, people always think AI is ChatGPT, but, you know, Siri is AI. Sorry if yeah. I activated anybody's devices. <laughs> uh, you know, so <laughs> is, you know, Google Maps. And, you know, so the algorithm on YouTube is a form. Of, I'm sorry, the algorithm on YouTube also um, or on TikTok. That's another form of AI where we're getting new kinds of media, new kinds of information, new kinds of feeds that never happened before. And a lot of businesses, yeah. let alone individuals, are missing the opportunity to make real connections that happen in video because people appreciate you being yourself. And of course, that's the other requirement, something I think you know a lot about. Yeah, the authenticity. It's really interesting that you bring up TikTok because I, I honestly, it's something that I didn't say I struggle with, but I don't, I haven't figured out how to or what to even do there because, uh, you know, I think the problem with it is my problem with it. And that is that when I go on it, I don't know what to search for because when you go on it, kind of a, as a newbie, you get things that probably, they, it doesn't fit me. And so then I can't even get in the space of what could I create that would make sense. It seems like it's a very foreign land to me. I don't know. If you well, have any tips on how do you one. actually. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, your idea of searching is a good one. And, and you know, you can search authenticity or you can search really micro subjects. But the other thing is to just right. give it a little more time. I had that same experience when I started on it. That uh, there's a bunch of dancing teenagers. Yeah. It's like that's not really for me. I, I don't get it. Yeah. I had read some interesting articles, but as I spend some time, hour at best, sometimes if you watch a feature, and then wait for something to come up that you're interested in, and it will get to know you pretty right. quickly. But it does take I don't know an hour or two. I don't even know what it is. But by the time you've been there a little while, the the feed just becomes fun and it's your definition of fun because it's paying attention. It's like, I, I have to admit that I like golf better than I do because it notices that I like golf videos. Right. And, and, and if I filled out a form, I might not have requested that, but it, you know, it's true that I do enjoy them and they're, some of them are better than others and I get to say the ones that I like. So, but it, oh, it, that's very, it, very there's cool. also the community aspect of it amongst people that are enthusiasts for a particular thing. Like I have in the back of my mind, Taylor Swift, who I think is not only an incredible master performer, singer, songwriter, and all of that, but is yeah. exemplary authenticity and personal branding engagement. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just read a, a carousel post on Instagram mm -hmm. of a marketing company talking about her as a personal branding master. And I think it's true. Right. And she, you know, she's an example of somebody who engages with her audience, knows how to be herself, despite the fact that she's a billionaire, despite the fact that she's dating an NFL football player or whatever. It's like, you know, she's, she's got it going on. I'm really, I'm, I'm a fan, if you could tell, <laughs> but I think she's very relevant to this conversation yeah. and, and the ability to connect yeah. via video 
and serve a specific yeah. audience. Yeah, that is so cool. And I, and I like how you brought in this idea of the connection because, yeah, certainly my, you know, I love YouTube for the, for the reason that, you know, it's, it is, it is that personal human connection point. And yeah, I definitely want to dive in. I think people listening might dive into TikTok. It isn't something that we do. Um, how do you see this whole, yeah, I mean, what AI is, but how is the transformation of video of what's happening with how we communicate with AI? Because, I mean, one of the, uh, from my point of view, it's, I mean, the one thing I don't like is all the computerized voices and the this idea that maybe are we getting away from our authenticity with AI or do you, would you disagree with that? It's not one thing, right? I was talking a minute ago about yeah. how it involves all these personal assistants and involves AI. I heard a Barack Obama video actually on TikTok of him talking about AI and, and uh, interviewing somebody from Silicon Valley. And the bottom line was he said it was being compared to the new electricity. So it's going to become, I mean, if you think about the way the internet has become part of almost everything that we do now, AI is going to become part of everything yeah. what, that we do. And it's the same thing as happened, as I've seen, as I've watched new technologies literally over decades, when the web came out, people were always trying to say, well, the web is now this. And the web isn't one thing. It's e-commerce, it's YouTube, it's I could go on social media, it's on and on and on. And yeah. AI is not one thing either. So it's a, it comes yeah. back to, with it, if I dare use that word, is, because, is that golden rule, under, double underlined all caps. You don't ever want to turn over the out your life, your control, your whatever, and let AI run with it. You always want the human yeah. to be involved. The AI actually doesn't have no. any intention, at least not so far, and I don't think that's going to happen soon. We bring the intention. Yeah. And so I go to AI to brainstorm, for one thing. I mean, it's the greatest. It's like having a creative buddy who's super talented, know, super I intelligent. Know. And I'd say, I'm thinking about <laughs> this. I say to ChatGPT, and you can do it on the what phone now. You can even with those? your voice. And it, give me 10 ideas related to that. I, let me go a little bit deeper because I had an experience, and I actually will soon be making a video about this, where – so. My business, I don't want to get too into the weeds with it, but my, I have a lot. I have a creative services company. As you know, I'm developing this new creativity sandbox community and other things going on with my business, different offers. And I said to ChatGPT, okay, I'm doing this, this, and this, and it feels like it's too many things. What would be the, you know, how do I combine those into a good, you know, position for a services company so that I can be more focused? And you know, and yeah. th the thing, another thing I want to underscore is you like conversations. The way to work with ChatGPT or an AI is conversationally. People make the mistake all the time. Yeah. They put in a question, they get back a response. It wasn't what they wanted. Ah, this thing sucks. I'm out of here. If you, th yeah. whatever you didn't like, tell it you didn't like that. Or if you want to emphasize more, or when I'm brainstorming, it comes back with a response and, and I go, as would happen in a normal conversation, oh, I forgot to tell you that I want to be more specific that I, there's this other ingredient that I'd like you to consider. Okay, it's happy. Oh, good. More yeah. input. And then it gives you different output. And then iterate, 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 iterate is the way to play with it. So anyway, at the end of the day, I had yeah. this conversation with it. It was not just one thing that I asked it and it gave me the answer. And then I asked it to, for ideas and marketing suggestions. And so I ended up with this thing now called the Video Mojo AI Studio. And one of the things that I will come under that is AI creativity consulting. And I, here's the funny part of it. So that came out of this conversation with ChatGPT. And then I thought about it and I went, <laughs> oh, I'm already doing that. I've actually done three sessions, one of which was paid, two of which were just me being friendly and helping people and because I like playing with AI. Um, and I recorded a video testimonial er earlier this week with a guy that is producing a documentary film and needed some B-roll is what we call it in the video business, some illustrations for particular scenes that weren't available because he's talking about something that happened back in the 70s. 
And and so I right. taught him in a 20 minute said, here's how you create graphics using ChatGPT. And he has now got images in his film as a result of our 20 minute AI creativity consult. So I was already doing that kind of, cause it's fun for me. And that's coming back to your original question. Yeah. I cut the, my life philosophy, if I had to put it into three words is follow the juice. So when I get excited yeah, and follow. lit up about something like I am about AI, like I am about yeah. TikTok, like I am about Taylor Swift, I go with that. And that yeah. following the juice, it's, it's yeah. you know, kind of like it's a natural enthusiasm that I can share with people. And, uh, you know, that's the thing that keeps yeah. me going. Yeah, well, it's one of the reasons I actually reached out to you, because when, whether you know it or not, <clears throat> I mean, the conversations we had were in a forum <coughs> where I met you. Sorry, <coughs> and um, and yeah, this passion for video, this passion for creativity, came out just in in what you were talking about. <coughs> so I'd like to um, just move with that and and talk about this concept that you have of the creativity sandbox, and I'm, I'm really super interested in you know how you how you're uh, using creative play because i think for me it's to do the best version of yourself is to create as humans that's in our dna and so mm -hmm. i would love to hear about creative play and your creative sandbox good and it, it, i want to use it also to bring back a point because you were asking about i don't know how tiktok works the challenge that i've yeah. had with tiktok and i think is almost universal is the challenge of being consistent if you want to grow. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. if you just want to play and, and you want to lurk or you want to maybe occasionally post just because you don't care, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. If you want to grow and build community, build an audience, been in and out of TikTok and on and off, you know, and I'm now in the process of, I'm going to come back and I was getting 100 new followers a day and sometimes more. And so that's the, that's part of the opportunity there is that you can attract an audience of people who aren't, who don't, weren't aware of you previously. And then it's up to you to make your feed right. valuable to make it meaningful or make it fun or whatever it is you're doing. But that element of consistency right. connects to the second circle. So I've got the three circles, right? The first one I mentioned is being, being curious, being willing to play, experiment, have an adventure, explore, however yeah. you want to say that. The second one is developing a practice. And, you know, nobody ever got good at anything without practicing. I, you know, this is, this is actually was my project in the last cohort of the Creativity Sandbox was to practice piano every day. So what the, how the sandbox is structured, and there's going to be a free level of the community as well. And I am going to be putting up a, so the, a further explanation of these three components. But we have a week of onboarding of kind of educating and orienting people to what the platform is. And then they do a 14 day yeah. sprint or at least commit to a 14 day sprint, do their best to do something, whether it's painting, writing poetry, playing the piano, guitar, whatever creative thing you want to do and do it once a day, mm -hmm. every day for 14 days and then post in the community about it. Um, I originally thought that I would get people to post on TikTok every day. And that is too big a ask. So what we've been doing in the circle community platform that you, both and I, you and I use, but that's the structure that the sandbox is offering to people. And it has literally been life changing for the people that have done it. I mean, that's what's super satisfying for me because it went from being the idea of a program to when you do something consistently for 14 days, it not only gets you better at the piano or whatever you're practicing, but it seems to change your whole life. I feel it personally that, right, people, right? you have to exercise, like going to the gym. So yeah. you don't, you know, I have yeah. a yoga teacher that says, you only you can do it. Only you can do it. But you can't do it alone. Yeah. So there's an irony there. That's but that's, right. So that's the yeah. third piece. I call it sometimes play well with others. But, you know, be involved in the community. You're not doing it by yourself. You're posting every day, so you're getting feedback, and we're encouraging each other. It creates an accountability. So this is my mm. new thing I'm I love planning that. to. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, that, that's the, yeah, the Real Mojo Creativity that. Sandbox. Can I throw in my URL here? 
So vi- yeah, it's just sure. vi- vi- video mojo yeah. dot circle dot so. Cool. And we'll put that in the show notes as well. And, and as you. I share this out, I know people will be interested in it. So that'll be great. And it it's does fun. lead into a great question. <laughs> in a, yeah. Leads into another, then my next question for you, because the reason people show up to the, to my channel here is because they are wanting to do the best version of yourself. And you've tapped so well into that creativity aspect, which I love of being human. And so can you just explain in your own words, maybe in a simple way is, is why does it matter? And what does it mean to, to do the best version of yourself every day? Yeah, it's a great question. And I love that you are focused on that. I mean, for me, it has to do with joy. And I have, you know, had a joyful, enthusiastic dimension that I can trace back to, you know, my youth, or at least, at least the college, I think was where that kind of woke up. But the, but it is, it hasn't always been front and center. And so for me, the focus on creativity rather than on the media services that have been and still are my bread and butter, uh, you know, is deepening my own humanity. And I, I think it's going to be different yeah. for everyone. But, but so yeah. I am a big fan of meditation. I'm a big fan of journaling. Uh, and I know that I get a lot of benefit out of that kind of reflection to see what bubbles up. Uh, and, you know, mm. and I also think there's a component of getting out of just being intellectual. I think I have a good intuition, and I think that helps me to notice when the juice is there and when it isn't, to use that word again. So, yeah. you know, to yeah, me, living that. the best life means being aligned with the juice. And then I have more joy, yeah. life is more fun, and the irony or I guess the unexpected, you could even say counterintuitive component is that the more fun I'm having, the more joy I'm experiencing, the more happiness I'm sharing with others and celebrating other people's happiness, then the ha- then life is good. Right. <laughs> and and uh yeah, I you love, know, it's I not love a, that. that's that's real wealth to me. You know, it's nice to have money in the bank, yeah. but if you're not having fun, there's all kinds of stories of billionaires and whoever all the money in the world and they're not happy or their kids are getting become yeah, drug addicts yeah, or whatever. It's like, so there are things yeah, that are more important yeah. than money. And I think that having joy and, and, you know, one of the lines that I've been using on the sandbox is don't die with your creative spark still stuck inside. And I've gotten pushback that I shouldn't be oh talking God. about death, but I think it's important. So we got to prioritize no, the important, important things. Yeah, I love that. That's that's so cool. So, yeah, and again, I know people listening are also interested in so, you know, how how, how what is your life look like? I mean, what and you talk about meditating, you talk about journaling. What is your morning routine? What is that those things that happen every day for you that kind of what I say keep you on like your heartbeat? Well, it's interesting. I mean, the things that I mean, one of the things that really helps me is community. So I try and meditate every day. In truth, I don't always do it these days. But I have this meditation mm-hmm. teacher, her, teacher, her name's Hannah Muse, um, who I am part of her community. And she leads a meditation right. every Tuesday and Thursday morning. And, you know, you know, why, what is this expression? Wild horses couldn't keep me away. You know, it's like, so that's a commitment. And that, mm-hmm. so that helps really kind of ground and gives me a really good meditation at least twice a week. And I do do more than that. Uh, and I have a journaling practice these days I'm doing, I have done, and I recommend uh, the Julia Cameron artist way uh, morning pages. That's a classic. And I think oh. a, a very powerful uh, practice. And I have done that in the past. So I don't forget important things like showing up for your podcast and, you know, delivering a course or whatever, you know, whatever a life of them might be. And then I do gratitudes. I write at least 10 things every day that I'm grateful for. And of course, there's science now that mm-hmm. has proven that focusing on gratitude is yeah. beneficial. 
So that's that's kind of my mm. the, those are the main elements I think of the morning practice. Uh, and then I've been finding time in the afternoon for playing the piano daily. And I, I, I'm like I said, I'm committing right here and now that I'm getting back on the TikTok bus and going to be doing those every day. Well, that, that sounds that really answer your good. question in terms of yeah, what you're looking just for? yes, of course you did. And and you brought up the artist way, which is interesting in the do community. Uh, we have one of our members next year will be taking us in uh, a focus mastermind, leading us through the artist way. And I've not done it. I can't wait. I've heard great things about it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. The, can so, I add one more piece there? Mm, I don't know. I know we're probably running out of time. Yes. But the, um, the, the other thing for me has been, and I never would have thought this was true, but um, is playing golf regularly. I now pretty regularly play right. golf twice a week. And it's been another That's foundational process that, you know, I mean, it gets me out. It's social. It was good during COVID that it was outdoors and we were still able to play with certain limitations. Um, but that experience, I fought it for a while and it's expensive and it's ecologically not great. And, you know, I could make a whole case against it, but I'm clear that it feeds my soul and I'm out, I'm being physical, right. I'm playing and it, it somehow balances mm -hmm. things. And so I, it's been many years now, actually, I just surrendered. Okay. This is like something in my life that helps me feel better and balances it out. Music is also something that I'm not a professional musician by any stretch, but I'm aware that my brain is being exercised in ways that it wouldn't be otherwise. And it's fun. So doing things that are fun and that light yeah. you up and, and give you a more expansive experience of life than the things that you should do. That's been a big thing for me is the shoulds yeah. can eat you up and, and let it be more about yeah. what feels good. Yeah, I definitely have kind of trimmed my life back recently and getting into those things that I love to do. And, and you talk about just that perfect balanced life of, of of the exercise of the community of time on your own of of diving into like music or art or something uh creative creatively to just allow us to live at that kind of higher level that higher vibrational level of of life where mm -hmm. we we then doing the best version of who we are is just part of who we are yeah uh, we, we do we are running we all, out of time but i do like we all deserve that richness i'll just say go ahead yeah no that's all that is we, like, do. we, we do. all we deserve all, to give all, ourselves the, those gifts and the self-care of whatever it is for you exactly so yeah i just want to ask we we in, in in our community the do 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 community we have a book club so i'm always interested in finding out what are one or two of your favorite books that you've read the one that i keep coming back to and that we also have talked about a lot in the cohorts of the video mojo creativity sandbox is the war of art by stephen pressfield it's a wow. really little okay. pithy book um, but it's focused on what he calls resistance so nobody has ever, I'm going to say, and he, I think, agrees with this, taken on creativity, whether it's writing, music, and so in a way okay. making friends with resistance and accepting the fact that that's part of the journey. There's going to be, I don't feel like doing it today. There's, you know, what I'm doing right now sucks. Self-judgment, you know, in video almost almost all the time it's like i don't like the way i look on camera i can't do video you know that's all resistance and it's a gorgeous little pithy book about facing resistance and doing the work anyway doing the play anyway what's what's the title again the the war of art you know it's a play on the there's the art of the war, war which is old so it's a play on words of the but it's called the war of art by stephen pressfield he also wow. wrote um, The Legend of Bagger Vance, which is a spiritual golf book that um, was made into a movie, but I hate the movie. I, but I, rec I highly recommend <laughs> The War of Art. Uh, I, I'm sorry, The War of Art and The Legend of Bagger Vance 
which is uh, by the same author. It's a sports novel based on the Bhagavad Gita. So it has it definitely has a spiritual dimension to it. And uh, it's a wonderful okay. read, whether you're a golfer or not. It's a wonderful read. Okay, I'm looking forward to both of those then. So just to, to tidy this a wonderful conversation up, again, thank you for coming here and, and having that. It's just, it's so great to connect with other people and to kind of find out what's happening in your world. And I've learned so much already, been inspired by you as well. But what is one of your favorite quotes and, and why is that? Oh, I should have that in front of me. Um... You know, I there's another member of our community. I wonder if I can find this quickly. Who I just I'm going to go with one that I read today. If you give me one minute, I think I could do it. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, we're not. That's in the hurry thing here. with these quotes. I just there's so many I have, and and which one resonates at the right time? But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, you've actually I, said I, a couple. Also through the circle community. I, can, I may not be able to find it right this second. Um, I, I also connected with another creative person who, I mean, who actually advocates and, and leads some kind of cohorts about creativity. We're going to have a, a Zoom get to know each other soon. Uh, oh, I think cool. I texted to somebody. I'm sorry about this. Yeah, I know where it is. I got it here. No problem. That's just... Great. That's great. Okay, now I'm going to put my glasses on. So the quote, the quote is yeah. from uh, Margaret Atwood, and she says that human beings okay. are creative storytelling beings. They make art because mm. that's what humans do. So, and then the, the poster goes on to say, I'm going to do everything in my power to help you reignite that same spark and know you had when you were a kid holding a crayon, because art is for everyone, period. Yeah. Hmm. I love that. I really, that, that really sums up a lot of what we've talked about today. And I love that idea that of you having that sandbox too, because when I, I do coaching and that with people and I, they, you know, they, they get to a point in their life where there, it is just work and responsibilities and everything. And, you know, it's like, how can I live to be the best version of myself or do the best version? And I always say, <laughs> start playing just just start playing just remember when you were a kid and you would just play and and exactly. try something you know and that, then, that was that's where the sandbox we, we idea can... started from because it was about remembering how we all were when like that art writer said when you held a crayon but you know as kids we had this freedom to play but i'll bring it back also to, to mm. your thing which is the community aspect of it is it for me at yeah. least it was somewhat counterintuitive that I needed playmates that just playing just playing the yeah. piano by myself yeah. really wasn't enough that there's something that happens when I put it out there and that's been mm -hmm. fun even on yeah. like on TikTok I put I pay, play the ukulele as well as the piano a little bit and it's like I put stuff out and again it's not that I'm great at playing and singing but there's an enthusiasm and a humanity to it that people relate to. And if yeah. I'm having fun, I think other people are mm. having fun. And that's kind of the general thing is that it is contagious. So the sandbox creates a container where people can play together. And that's kind of play the big together. thing is, yes, yeah. play and play with others. And then it's, yeah. there's actually an alchemy that changes, dare I say, everything. That's it. And today we can connect with people in any part of the world, and and the sandbox is virtual. It's an amazing, I love that. isn't it? A hundred percent. You know, I've had yeah, yeah. two people from Germany on my podcast. I've had a, a teacher that I work with in Denmark. You know, it's like you know, met with people in Indonesia and India, and it's a, yeah. you know, New Zealand, Australia. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's so cool. Right? Yeah. Well, thank you, John, so much for this conversation. And those of you listening will definitely 
check out the show notes below. We'll have all of John's contacts, his TikTok. So we'll be watching to see if he's actually doing what he says and finding out about his golf and, and anything else he wants to post on there. And also AI about video. his creativity sandbox. Yeah. Thank so you, that's Lorraine, all thank there. Thank you so and much for having me. Yeah, no problem. 